But with this morning being Mother's Day and Father's Day is just a, a month away, uh, this is a wonderful time to celebrate parenthood. And so that's what the message is about this morning. I wanted to take the opportunity to speak on the topic of, of children. Andy Stanley says, Your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. How true is, is that? That's, that's a great stewardship, as we were just mentioning. Uh, it's, it's a great responsibility that is given us by God. Parenthood is a, is a gift from God. It's a stewardship. It's a responsibility that He has given to us. Listen to what Psalm 127.3 says. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Children are a heritage from the Lord. They're, they're a fruit of the womb. They're a reward from God. And I, I, I remember when, when both Zane and Daxton uh, were born, looking at, at those little babies, and I'm sure you parents can relate, and, and, and thinking, <laughs> this, this, isn't, this isn't merely biological. <laughs> this, is, this is a miracle. <laughs> this is something special. This is a gift from God. This is something that God has, has given to us. Yes, I know how science works, and, and I know how the human body works, but this is from God. It's a gift. And children are a gift, a reward that God has given to us. And this morning, uh, immediately after the sermon, Joel and Lavender have decided they want to uh, dedicate, they'll be the first in our church, they want to dedicate their children uh, to the Lord. And so, after the sermon, um, Scarlet and Crimson will, will come in and, 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 and that's what we're going to do. They're going to they're gonna make a vow uh, and the church Church, we're going to be invited to, to join in on this vow. And it, it, it's, it's reflecting the commitment to raise scarlet and, and crimson in the ways of the Lord. And that's what this morning's message reflects. It's, it's not just a, a message for mothers, though it's Mother's Day and today we're celebrating uh, the gift of, of motherhood. But it's for fathers as well. It's for us parents. And it's, it's not just for the parents, but it's for the grandparents. So this message is for everybody here. Because it's not just a message for the immediate family. This message is for us as a church body. Now, one mistake that, that we can make as, as, as parents, as Christian parents, is thinking that it's the church's job to raise our kids in the Lord. We raise them in everything else, and it's the church's job to teach them about God, and that's a huge mistake. <laughs> it, it starts at home. You are their pastor. <laughs> Mothers, fathers, you are your children's pastors, and, and it's your job to raise them in the Lord. But on the other hand, another mistake is, is that the church doesn't make it a priority. And I'm not talking about the organization. I'm talking about the people. Our one of our first priorities should be our, our children and our children's area as a church body because they are the future Christian leaders. One of the greatest ways to partake in the Great Commission, remember Jesus before he left, he said, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest ways we can, we can partake in that commission and that commandment from, from the Son of God is with our, our children. Did you ever think of your children when you're raising your children in the Lord, when you're teaching your children about God, that you are partaking in the great commission? You are making disciples in your own home. A 2004 Barna study indicates that nearly half of all Americans who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior do so before reaching the age of 13. That's 43%. And that two out of three born-again Christians, that's 
made that commitment to Christ before their 18th birthday. One out of eight born again, 13%, made their profession of faith while 18 to 21 years old. So you see a drop off after, after 18 to, to 21. And less than one out of four rises a, a slightly after that. Uh, born again Christians, that's 21%, embrace Christ after their 21st birthday. Barna noted that these figures are consistent with similar studies it has conducted during the past 20 years. So, yeah, the study was conducted in 2004, but 20 years before that is pretty consistent. So it's been pretty consistent from 2004 until now. Among Christians who embraced Christ before their teen years, half were led to Christ by their parents, with another one in five led by some other friend or relative. Comparatively, few accepted Jesus in response to a minister's personal prompting, only 7%. And only one out of eight cited a special event as the turning point in their journey. So statistically speaking, I know this is a very spiritual matter, but statistically speaking, this shows that the role of a parent can play a, a huge role in the, in the spiritual formation of our children. And so... As I exhort us, <laughs> including myself, anything I preach, I pre preach to myself, I want to temper this with, 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 with much grace, because that's what the gospel is. It's, 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 it's God's grace on us. We have no, absolutely no, and this is, this is a mistake that the, the parents uh, can make, and, and they put uh, too big of a burden on their backs. We have absolutely no saving power over our children, just like we have no saving power over anyone. <laughs> it's a work of the Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a work of, of God. And to give you an example, King David, a man after God's own heart, of course we know that he made a lot of mistakes, but he was a servant of the Lord, he was a godly man, and he raised several children. And as you read through scriptures and you read the stories of David, some of his children served the Lord and some of them didn't. So you can have children in the same household and some will serve, you raise them in a godly way, raise them to love Jesus, and some will, some might not. It's a work of the Holy Spirit through faith that that child will have to place in Jesus Christ. But God has chosen us as parents, as, as instruments to bring about God-fearing children. It's a, it's a privilege and it must be a priority. But we, in and of ourselves, we don't have the ability to do so. To take on the task, I mean, <laughs> it's a huge task of pointing the way to Jesus Christ. And you see, Israel, when they stood before God and Moses, they failed miserably when they vowed to be a light to the nations. They stood before God and he says, will you obey my commandments? Will you be a light to all the nations? And Israel was like, yep, we'll do it. Let's go. And they fell flat on their faces. So this message must be tempered with grace. Only by the grace of God can we lead our children down the road that Jesus paved for us through the cross. <laughs> I think of my own children uh, with Zane and, and Daxton and my own failings. I, I haven't always been the, the greatest example. Sometimes I, I feel like I raise my voice too much. I, I let them down Sometimes, sometimes I, uh, I question my approach to certain things, uh, my, my decisions in, in certain situations. Sometimes I question my own desire when I, I find myself ap apathetic. But what God is looking for is a, is a willingness from us. He's looking for a, a desire from us to live for him. He's not looking for us for, for perfection. Again, we, we can't do it. It's got to be the power of God. But he's looking for willing vessels who say, okay, here I am, Lord. Would you empower me to lead my children? Will you give me the wisdom? Will you give me the strength? God, would you, through my prayers, would you make them godly men and, and women? 
He's looking for a, a desire from us. That's where it starts, to see our children know Him and love Him and live for Him. Just like with other people, anybody in the Great Commission, it's our job to point the way, and it's God's job to change their hearts. A great privilege to teach our children about Jesus. And, and it's, it's mission number one. It has to be mission number one in raising our children above everything else. And, and of course, we would like to say, yeah, God is number one, but we need to make it in our lives the, the priority number one is to raise our children in the Lord. And you know, some people say that, that we should let our children, we should, we should take a neutral approach and let our children decide for themselves. It's not fair to, to, to uh, cram the Bible down their throats, to brainwash them, some people would say. Let's be neutral and let them decide what faith they want to follow. But what does the Bible say? And here's where we get to our Deuteronomy passage. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. God says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So you see, it's in us first. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house, and your gates. And that last part, he's not talking about literally binding that to our hands. It should be in our action. It should be in, in, in our thoughts. God, God's way and God's word. And we should teach our children as we go. Think about this. Do you let your children decide right or wrong for themselves? Or do you teach them right or wrong? Do you let your children decide what food is, is good for them? Or do you teach your children what food is good for them? Do you let your children decide if mommy and daddy know best? Or do you teach your children <laughs> that mommy and daddy do indeed know best? So why not with, with God? You know, maybe agnostics can let their children decide because they haven't decided for themselves. And so that's understandable. I don't know... I don't know if God exists. I don't know what the right faith is, so I'm going to let my children decide. They have the ability to let their children decide, but, but not, not us. We claim that we found the truth. <laughs> we've claimed that we've been, we've been born again, that we've seen the light, that we know the one true God. It's not just I hope so. It, it has been revealed to us, and we, the light has come on, and, and we have found the truth. And we should teach our kids about the truth that we have found. Now, ultimately, they will have to decide for themselves. Their faith is going to have to be their own faith and not the faith of their parents. But we are called to point the way to Jesus Christ. And it's not only statistics that, that prove that, that godly parenting, being purposeful in our parenting, is beneficial, but the Bible itself. Proverbs 22, 6. Many of you know this scripture. Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now understand, this isn't a promise from God. It's, 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 called, a, it's called a proverb. It's a proverb. It's a, it's a rule of thumb. It's a wise saying that if we, if we raise our children in the Lord, <laughs> that there's a lot better chance, and that's how all the proverbs work, there's a lot better chance that they're going to serve the Lord later on. We saw with David, though, that doesn't always happen. It's not a promise from God. So those of you who have raised your children in the Lord and they're not serving the Lord, that's not a testament that you have done anything wrong or you have failed them. God says raise your children 
And it's a rule of thumb that they won't depart. But we've seen by example that's not always the case. The faith that they were taught has to become their own faith. This proverb doesn't just apply to raising our children in the Lord. It applies to other areas. If you teach your children, uh, children something now, discipline, whatever, when they're older, they will not depart from it. And there are many other important aspects of raising children. Uh, some the Bible address, such as discipline. Uh, we see a lot of that in Proverbs. The rod and reproof give, give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Discipline your son, says Proverbs 29, 17, and he will give you rest. He will, he will give delight uh, to your heart. Education is also uh, very extremely important with our children. Uh, obviously providing food and shelter uh, for our children is important. But there is no way that, that we can love our children more than to teach them about the one true God and salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. You won't value teaching your children about Jesus. Listen to this. We won't value teaching our children about Jesus if we don't value Jesus Himself. It just won't happen. <laughs> it's got to it's gotta be in us to come, to come out of us. Uh, the Bible doesn't say, uh, just like we talked about the church, it's, it's uh, yeah, we, we as a church, we take responsibility, but it's not priority number one with the church, it's priority number one with us as, as parents. So occasional devotionals or, or Sunday school isn't the best way, but rather the Bible, Deuteronomy, God said, teach them as you go. That means it's a way of, it's a way of life. It's the way we live life with our children. And that starts with our relationship with Jesus Christ. If we don't pray, <laughs> we're not going to teach our, our children to pray. If that's not in us, we're not going to teach them. It's going to be awkward when we do. If we, if we ourselves aren't investing in God's Word, it's not going to come out of us in order to teach our children. If we don't walk in the Spirit, we won't be lights to our children. I, t I shared with you guys uh, many of my failures and I know in a lot of those times I'm not walking in the spirit. I get in my flesh because I get aggravated because they're getting on my nerves or something and I get uh, too sharp. And sometimes, you know, I have to get firm with my kids. Other times, it's, it's all on me. <laughs> you know, I'm concentrating on something else and those of you who know me best, I'm one track minded and child's in there saying something sweet and you know, and I say something sharp back, and I'm like, Scott, what are you doing? You know, it, 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 I want you guys to understand this is something, and as we go into this commitment, we're asking God for His grace, for Him to empower us. This is nothing that we can, we can even begin to accomplish on our own, but asking God to work through us and even through our mistakes and our, and our shortcomings, that He would use us. But remember, He needs willing vessels. If we don't sacrificially give, neither will our children learn to be sacrificial givers with other people. If we don't value the church, our children are not going to value the church. They won't do it. We are missionaries. Listen to this. We are missionaries to our children. We, we, all, we, we think of missionaries as going overseas. And, and in this church, we're trying to cultivate a culture where we look at ourselves as missionaries in our own backyards. When we go out and do this water thing, we're missionaries. When you leave here and you go to the workplace, you are missionaries. When you're the, with the rest of your family, you're missionaries. And when you are with your children and you're raising your children, you are missionaries sent by God to point the way to Jesus Christ. We're missionaries. But you cannot lead. We cannot lead where we are not going. That's why I always tell uh, people in this church, Christians, and then people who are, who are going to step up and be leaders, we can't lead where we're, not, where we're not going ourselves. If I'm not serving the Lord, if I'm not, I can't, I can't lead you guys if I'm not going there myself. You see what I mean? And it works the same way in raising our children. But you're thinking, as I said before about myself, well, I've, 
I've failed. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you're thinking, oh, I've failed miserably. I haven't raised my children in the Lord at all. Or I've failed them in this way. Or I've failed them in, in that way. Scott, you don't, you don't understand. Teach them about failure. <laughs> That's part of, of being a light to our children is, is teaching them that we're not perfect and, and, and we, we fail. And, and one of the things I try and do, and again, I haven't always been perfect in it, is, is when I realize that I have been sharp, call my children back in and I say, look, buddy, and it breaks my heart sometimes because Zane's been in tears because I was sharp with him and I knew I was wrong and I could have played it off like, you know, make him think that he got in trouble for the right thing, but I was wrong and I call him in and I say, look, daddy was wrong for that and I shouldn't have said what I, what I did. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. Daddy was wrong. Would you forgive me? Maybe you're thinking I've let them down. I mean, teach them through apology apologize to your children. Ask for your children's forgiveness where you've let them down. You're thinking, I just, I can't do it. Not on your own, you can't. Not on your own. But make Christ, and that's the point here, make Christ your treasure. <laughs> He's that treasure hidden in a field, as one parable says. He's that pearl of great price. Make Him the goal and the target of your life and the passion of your life, and watch God work. Watch God work in the life of your children. Ask God to enable you through the power of His Holy Spirit. And that's really what this morning's dedication is, is all about. Would somebody, uh, would you guys want to go get um, Scarlet and Crimson and go ahead and bring them in? That's what this morning's dedication is about. It's about asking God's grace upon these children that we're uh, about to bless. It's, it's about asking God's grace, His grace, upon these parents. It's about asking God's grace upon us as, as a church. As we raise these children together, we, we all take part in this as we raise these children to love Jesus Christ let's pray and then when they'll come back in we'll uh, we'll proceed with the dedication I'm gonna start with Joel and and lavender and and uh, we're gonna sort of like a, 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 a wedding vow uh, we're gonna make a statement and if you agree you say we do and then I'm gonna turn to us as a church and and if you agree uh, then we will all collectively together uh, say we do. Joel and Lavender, as parents under the grace of God, we will strive to care for and raise our children in a God-honoring way so that when they are old enough, they might surrender their lives to Jesus and become a follower of Him. We, Joel and Lavender, commit to do this by praying for our child regularly, and I let them read this beforehand. Teach our child about Jesus and God's eternal principles from the Bible, faithfully attending church with our child, modeling a Christ-like Christ -like life at work, in the home, in our marriage, and as parents. And parents, if you make this commitment by the grace of God, say we do. We do. Amen. All right, church, it's our turn. As the church, under the grace of God, we will support, encourage, and care for this child and family by praying for them faithfully, being their spiritual family, modeling through our collective lives what it means to be a Christian, walking beside this family as these, child, as these children grow in spiritual knowledge and understanding. Church, if you make this commitment, say, we do. We do. We do. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I want to bless these children uh, and you guys before we leave. Father, <clears throat> I'm just going to pray, God, like I, like I pray over my children, Lord. Uh, it's not in my strength and in my power, God, but I want to be used, Lord, and, and, and Joel and Lavender want to be used, Lord, and I, I pray that 
uh, you would empower them to, to, to do so, God. Give them a passion, first and foremost, for you, Lord, and to run after you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I, I pray that you bless them with wisdom, God, and uh, Lord, that you make them the godly parents that, that they need to be to point the way. Lord, and, and, and we pray blessing over these little babies, God. Lord, I pray that Crimson would be such a strong man of God, Lord, and, and I don't pretend to know how you would use him. Your will be done in his life, but use him in mighty ways. Whatever you've got prepared for him, use him in a mighty way to serve you all the days of his life. Lord, and, Crim and, 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 and Scarlet, God, I pray she would be a mighty woman of God, and I pray the same over her. Use her as you see fit, and take her down the path that you have already prepared for her, and use her for great things for your glory, Lord. We love you, and we thank you for your grace, and we pray blessing over this family. In Jesus' name, amen.